Hello, neighbors, and welcome or welcome back to the stream. I am Squealer D, and I am back again. And today, friends, we are back in investing, back in finance, on Investopedia for our series on stock market learning. This today, we are going to cover how to invest when you are broke, when you have no money. How do you invest money? We're going to get some ideas from Tim Parker on Investopedia and see what he has to say. Hello, Ronix. How are you today, friend? Hopefully you are doing good. Okay, so we are just going to go ahead and get started with the article today, and then we are going to go over um, some Yahoo stuff. You know how we always like to look at the money at the end of the day. I get worked up, so we'll save that for last. Um, let's just jump right into this. If you guys have any want to see more of these videos, there are about 32 more videos inside of a folder called Stock Market Learning in my playlist. And I'm sure that it would be very helpful to get you started on your learning journey. If you know a lot about the stock market, well then stay around my friend and give us your nuggets of information in the chat, please. So, how to invest when you're broke by Tim Parker. And this was updated uh, about last summer, so there might be a couple more things, but I think it is okay. The old saying that it takes money to make money is true. For those living paycheck to paycheck, there often isn't enough money left over to put towards investing. When you need the money now, thinking about an individual retirement account and the stock market may, may be far down on your priority list. However, by reading this article and gaining knowledge, you are taking one of the necessary first steps in building a retirement nest egg. And my friends, that is what I always say. Oh, well, good morning. It's 147. I guess it's good early morning to you, my friend. For me, it is 848 in the morning. So it's not too early, but it is, you know, it's at least morning time. So and end, if I want to be up for the beginning of the stock market, I have to learn to wake up earlier than this. So I might be up with you even earlier, my friend. So uh, this is what I've been saying, guys. We... I used to think that I was going to wait to do the stock market when I got rich. And I think that a lot of people think that they're temporarily broke people. They're not poor. They just aren't rich yet. And so I always thought that when I got more money or when I got a better job or when I finished with college, because I went to college and I got two degrees and I did an internship and I was ready. I was like, okay, so when I get this job, I had a job offer, $70,000 a year. When I get this job, I'll start making the $70,000 a year. My loans will be easy to pay off, my school loans. And then, you know, I'll start investing in the stock market and I'll figure out the stock market then. But guys, sometimes life has a one-two punch for you. And I had a one-two back surgery punch and I didn't get to use my two degrees ever. I went to college, I got two degrees, and I never got to use either one of them because of my back surgeries. So sometimes life will give you something unexpected that puts your learning off even further. So do not put financial literacy off. When I was a little kid, I would have never said, oh, you know, maybe I'll learn to read when I get old. I would have never put my literacy on hold. But I put my financial literacy on hold by saying, you know, when I, when, when I get money, then I'll start investing money. But in order to start investing, guys, even if you are dead broke, I'm telling you, if you are watching me on a free Obama phone and you live in a tent, this is right now, while you're not busy in that tent, that's what you need to be doing, learning. Learning how you will make money when you get out of that tent. Because you will. Guys, I've lived in a tent before as a child. You will come up. If you want to come up, you will come up. And I know everybody says, oh, well, you pull up your bootstraps. That's not it, guys. It's mental. If you think of yourself as downtrodden and, you know, you give up, then you're going to give up. But if you look at yourself as learning and you will be better, you will get better. All right. Well, 
this shouldn't be very long, Rennick. This my my videos are usually about an hour at the longest. I try to keep it quick so that people can understand that you don't have to spend a lot of time learning money to learn money. It's just something that you have to be consistent with, just like a diet. And by diet, I don't mean to lose weight, guys. I mean the diet that you eat. Like the food that you eat is called a diet, not not discounting your food or or reducing your food. But the diet that you eat, the food that you eat, just as important, guys. Learning money, same as eating, okay? So the key takeaways of this article that we're going to read is that setting aside small amounts of money can help you save even if the idea of investing is daunting. Dividend reinvestment plans allow you to buy small amounts of dividend-paying stocks straight from the company while reinvesting the dividends. So a dividend reinvestment plan, guys, we're going to read about that, and that is where you can use the money that you make, the dividends, to reinvest, and you're getting more and more stocks. So you're not actually using the money that you're making, that you're surviving off of. You're using the dividends. So we're going to read about that, and that can be helpful for people. That's what I've been looking into because I don't have a lot of capital to start with either. And when you start on the bottom, you have to look for steps. And these are the steps we're looking for. So if you learn these steps, guys, you will learn how to get out of financial illiteracy. You will become literate. So you can buy one EFT share at a time through a broker. So we see all the time people buy like 100 shares. You could buy one share, guys. It's okay. Did you know that I have one share on Robinhood of a... Oh, I can't even think of, it's a fuel company, like West Pro Fuel or something. I can't think of the exact name right now. I've had it for so long. And I have one stock, guys, and I got it because I didn't have very much money. I only had $20 or something on the on Robin Hood at the time. And so I put my money on there and I bought one share of something so that I could watch and see how the market worked. And I've been doing it now for, I've had uh, my Robin Hood account like for two years now. And... I'm just now taking the next step, guys, to learn more. I just kept my little one share. And I also have 53 shares of Dogecoin, which are not even worth a penny each. So we just, a couple years ago, I wanted to get, I, I got interested a couple years ago. And like I said, all I did was buy one stock on Robinhood just to watch it. So my portfolio is worth like $14, guys. And that's okay. It's a good place to start. If all you do is just go on to Think or Swim and try the free money, guys, it's great. I use it all the time. It's okay. Although Target Date funds divvy up for your investment based on your target retirement date, they often have large minimums to initially invest and may have sub substantial fees. So fees are always a thing you have to watch, guys. A 401 with matching funds is essentially free money and therefore should take priority outside of over out over outside investments. So if you're eligible to have a 401k, guys, your job offers a 401k where they put free money in to they match you, do that. It's free. Like, I know that it's hard to live without the $25 extra out of your check, but just pretend like you didn't get paid that. If you didn't get paid the $25, you would make it work. So don't let them pay it for you. Take it straight out of your check into your 401k, and it could be something like $20. I'm, you know, you can start little. Investors who are in debt need to understand what kind of debt they are in, and they may need to prioritize paying off debt over investing for a period of time. And there are big reasons for this, guys. A lot of people don't like to pay off their debt first. They still want to, you know, pay themselves and invest, and I get that. But there are big reasons to pay off your debt first, guys. What if your debt has 20% interest? Well, the most you're going to make on a trade is probably 15%. So you're not even going to make up the difference for having, you know, for investing. Unless you make over what your debt owes. If your debt is 20% and you can only get 15, 10, 8% on investing, then you need to pay off your debt first because your debt is growing faster than you can make the money on the market. So it's important to learn these things, guys so that we can become self-sufficient in the money market. If we don't, if we don't join the money market, then the money market just uses us. And you can tell. You can tell that the market moves along and it changes the economy whether we partake or not. 
So people are going to buy from Coca-Cola, whether we agree with Coca-Cola or not. Coca-Cola stocks are going to be there. Berkshire Hathaway is going to invest into Coca-Cola, whether we like it or not. So it's better for us just to get a little bit of money. Maybe, guys, we stop buying our cigarettes and we use that little bit of money to invest in Coca-Cola. Because if you leave that money in Coca-Cola, it doesn't look like right now anybody's shying away from Coca-Cola, guys. You know, Coca-Cola and sugar. Berkshire Hathaway said it's it's risen over a thousand percent or a hundred percent, guys. The use of sugar. So if you invest in sugar, then how could you lose? People are addicted to sugar. And they, they're not just going to stop eating sugar. We see that. It's getting worse and worse. So I'm not saying that you're going to like it, but if you put your money there, it's going to be better than putting it into a pack of cigarettes, even if it's only $5, right? So let's continue. You need money. The fact remains that you must put away money. You must put money away for later years. Or you face a possible castor, catastrophic situation, guys. Someday you won't be able to work. Or... Social Security won't be enough to live on. Did you guys know that if you can't work right now, let's say you're born with a disability. You, you didn't get your disability. You're born with it. You can't hear. And because you can't hear, you also don't talk well. Maybe your speech is, is impeded somehow. But you were born this way, guys. Did you know that in the state of Washington and California and Oregon, you will get under, I think, $1,100 in Social Security a month. If you're on Social Security in um, SSI, guys, Social Security gives you under $1,100 a month or at $1,100 a month. Some states it's $900, some states it's $800 a month. So you're not able to work, right? It wasn't your fault. You were born that way. But you don't get enough to live on these days, guys. So assuming that Social Security will be enough to live on when you're 70 is absurd. If they can only give people born, I'm talking people with born disabilities, if they can give them an amount that isn't even enough to pay for rent, then you will not get enough to live on when you're 70. You have to assume that Social Security is going to be gone. You just have to. That's assuming the fund is around in 20 or 30 years, which, guys, it's not going to be. If it is around, it will be a whole nother program. You can start investing now with less money than you think it will take. First, we have to solve the problem of limited funds. And the advice isn't new or revolutionary. Something in your life has to go, but it doesn't have to be a big life change. Simple changes that save a dollar here and five dollars there can add up to make a big impact. We put together a few ideas for those who don't see any available funds for, fu for investing. And a tip, as with anything else, make sure you consult a, a financial professional about your investment options. This is especially important if you're trying to juggle saving while paying off your debts. You guys, there's a lot of programs that, that don't charge up front. You might just pay a percentage of what your of what your debt is that will help you figure out how to how to pay off your debt. There are free programs for low income people. Google it. Um, there are ways to file bankruptcy so you can get the debt off of your off of your your credit for free, guys. You can file bankruptcy for free. So you have to look into how you can get. A little bit of money freed up. And like I told you guys, sometimes it's just as easy as giving up sugar, making coffee at home. If you go to Starbucks and you pay $5 a coffee or $6 a coffee, you can make coffee at home for a dollar, guys. Buy some beans. Grind those beans. Put those beans in a mocha pot. Then you have espresso, right? Pour some cashew milk over your espresso. And then use a sugar-free creamer. All of that together for about a week's worth of coffee is maybe, let me see, five, 10, $20, $15, guys, for a week's worth of coffee, coffee. And you can have unlimited amounts. That will last you, if you only drink a cup a day, what I just said will last you two weeks. Two weeks of coffee for $15. And you don't have to worry about going to Starbucks every day, so you save your gas also. And I know it sucks, guys. Saving money sucks. Having money does not suck. So if you want to go from a suck life to a not suck life, you have to suck first. Okay? It's just as what it is. So I got my, guys, 
no coffee today. I'm out of coffee and I'm out of creamer. So you know what I did? I'm trying to be frugal too, guys, so that I can build up my, my account, you know, and I want my, <laughs> I want my account to be bigger. So I just had tea this morning. But the only kind of tea we had was Earl Grey. And Earl Grey has this weird taste to it. And then I put caramel syrup, sugar-free caramel syrup, guys. And Earl Grey and sugar-free caramel syrup tastes absurd together. I don't even know what it tastes like. It's not great. It's not horrible where it makes you want to spit it out. But I got to drink it before it gets cold because it will not be good cold. Okay, so a drip, guys. Let's find out what a drip is. A drip is a dividend re reinvestment plan. So these allow you to invest small amounts of money into a dividend-paying stock by purchasing directly from the company. Companies like GE, Coca-Cola, Verizon, Home Depot, and Johnson & Johnson are just a few of the companies that allow you to make regular purchases of very small amounts of stock and reinvest the dividends. So remember guys, dividends are money that they pay you for owning the stock, right? So you buy a small amount of stock, they give you dividends like every three months, every four months, quarterly, right? And then you take that free money they gave you and you reinvest it back into more stock so that you'll get more dividends and more stock. You see how this can add up to a big investment over time. And as you gain a larger balance, you may consider, consider diverting some of these funds into other investments. So let's say you do this for a whole year. You buy Coca-Cola stock, guys, just like Berkshire Hathaway. And you buy small amounts. You're only using your coffee money, okay? So you saved $20 a week for your coffee. Good job, guys. I'm proud of you. $20 a week? Guys, that's $80 a month. That's a good amount. $80 a month can grow exponentially if you're buying small amounts of stock and if you're educated so you know which stocks to buy. So you buy a small amount of stock and you reinvest the dividends and you do this for a year. You will be able to take some of those funds out after a year and start investing into, you know, who knows? Maybe you'll have $150 and you can start investing 100 of that into other small cap um, stock when when we start really investing and you can practice in the meantime as you're diverting these in you can invest yourself invest in yourself in the meantime by learning the stock market and by learning i mean really going you guys really going to thinkorswim opening up thinkorswim and training yourself training yourself to buy small stocks and grow your money so you can go to eft's Exchange-traded funds are financial products that track the performance of a certain sector of investment market. You can buy as little as one share of an EFT through a broker, and some of these EFTs track the performance of the total stock market, the bond market, and many others. So that's what I did as buying my first share. I just bought a share of something because I wanted to see how the broker worked, guys. And if you buy an EFT, just one EFT, you can track the performance of that and track, you, you see what I mean? Like you, you can track it guys, just like we're using Thinkorswim to learn. You can use the stock market as a learning tool also with the very little money. So many EFTs also pay a dividend, just like Coca-Cola and those other stocks we talked about. Making a purchase in a fund like the Vanguard total stock market EFT, which is VTI, an instantly diversified portfolio that also pays a dividend. So you could invest first, like say you have $150 right now you want to put in. You could invest it into this Vanguard total stock market, wait for your dividends to come, reinvest them back into Vanguard total stock, reinvest, reinvest, keep making money off of $150, guys, and not take it out. So target date funds. Target date funds, as the name implies, target your retirement date by changing the percentage of stocks and bonds to assure that your money remains safe as you approach your retirement age. Some of these funds require a minimum investment of $1,000, but they may serve as great products for investors who don't want to manage their portfolios on their own. But make sure you use caution when picking a target date fund because of the high fees that some of these vehicles charge. 
So I'm guessing these are kind of like bonds where if you sell, it's a target date fund. So if you get out of a CD or a bond too early, they charge you a fee. So you got to be careful with everything we do. And that's why we're learning, guys, because what do I tell you? The very first part of learning the stock market is right here in your head, accepting that you have to learn it, guys. It's a, it's going to be a lifelong learning too. some of these vehicles. Once we are once we have more money, you can set them and forget them. But if you are more involved in your retirement, you are going to have a better retirement. OK, that, that that is for everything, everything. If you want to own a store, you can run a store without ever going into your store. Correct. You can hire a manager. But that doesn't mean that your store is going to be ran exactly how you want it to be ran. When you hand over the keys to your items, guys, people run your item the way they want to run your item, even if you're in charge. You know, it's, it's why people say nobody wants to work anymore or I can't find a good employee because people are going to do what they want to do. You can't force them. So if you educate yourself and you stay on top of your, you know, you use caution and you use your education, you're going to have less trouble with your vehicles just is what it is so a 401k is an employer sponsored retirement savings plan that allows you to put away a portion of your paycheck into an investment account the plan comes with tax savings depending on the type of plan you have if you invest in a traditional 401k you could set aside pre-tax dollars which lowers your taxable income and therefore your tax liability if you invest in a Roth 401k, any withdrawals you make during retirement are tax-free. See? You got to know those guys. And maybe, maybe you will never work a traditional job, so you will never have a 401k. And that is okay, guys, because guess what? They have, I don't know where, because I've never done it, but they have 401ks for self-employed. I'm pretty sure they do, guys. I know they do. I've heard of them. See, you could just go and you could have, there are, T, look, TD Ameritrade has a small business retirement plan designed for small businesses. And if you guys are yourself working to make money, you are a small business, right? So you, look at this profit sharing. They have op options for you if you are self-employed. So don't think that you're out of the 401k loop just because you don't work a typical job. Because I'm with you guys. I'm not into working typical jobs either. I like atypical jobs, okay? So how do you invest while you're in debt? Maybe you guys have student loans. Maybe you have um, credit cards, you know, lines of credit from a store. How do you invest if you have that? Well, if you have some money saved or invested, you want to see it grow over time. There are many factors that can prevent this from happening. Debt is one of the biggest obstacles for some people. If you have a sizable amount of debt to deal with, whether it's a mortgage, a line of credit, student loan, or credit card, you could still learn how to balance your debt with saving and investing. Having debt can make it very difficult for investors to make money. In some cases, investing while in debt is like trying to bail out a sinking ship with a coffee cup. For instance, if you owe money on an LOC with 7% interest, the money you put aside will have to make more than 7% after taxes and fees to make it more profitable than paying down the debt. There are investments that deliver such high returns, but you have to be able to find them knowing you are under the burden of debt. So guys, that's what I'm saying. If you have a high fees, pay that down so that the things that you do will be, pro will be profitable. Let's say... You pay this credit card down with your $20 a week extra that you got from your coffee. Once that credit card's paid down, then it doesn't matter how much you make from the market. You're not worrying about another 7% fees on another item. You're free of this, and now you can, you can do it. But if your interest rate is only 3%, well, there are many vehicles that you can get in over 3% and make that pay down the debt and still have out your line of credit. So it's important to briefly disting distinguish between the different kinds of debt that may be incurred. There's high interest debt. High interest is relative, but anything above 10% is a good candidate for this category. Having said that, you could probably count your credit card as a high interest debt. 
Carrying any kind of balance on your credit card or similar high interest vehicle makes paying it down a priority before starting to invest. So low interest debt, this type of, so credit cards, guys, if you have high credit, let's say you carry a, an account on your target a card just because it's $300 and it's easy to carry that, right? You pay $50 and then you use that $50 and you always have $300. The interest rate on a target card is not good, guys. So if you get rid of your target debt, you could still use your target card. It, it gives you 5%. When you use your target card, you get 5% off, guys. So use your target card if you have it, but pay it down. Use that money and pay it down. Every time, already have the money. If you only have $60, only spend $60 at Target, guys, and then pay that off because you could keep this percentage off, high interest out of your portfolio is what we'll call it, out of your wallet. Don't have high interest in your wallet. Low interest debt may often be a car loan or a line of credit or a personal loan from a bank like you use for a house or, or your, your car or whatever. So these are important, guys. Some of us can't live without these types of the, this type of low interest debt. The interest rates are usually described as a prime plus or minus a certain percentage. So there's still some performance pressure from investing with this type of debt. It is, however, much less daunting to make a portfolio that returns 12% than one that has to return 25%. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that your credit score determines your interest rate. The better your score, the lower your rate. But if you have less than stellar credit history, the, ch the chance of a low interest loan. What? He didn't finish. There's no period. Where's the rest of the... Where's the rest of the, but if you have a less than stellar credit history, the chance of a low loan, interest loan is impossible, guys. That's what he meant to say. If you have bad credit, you're not getting a low interest loan. That's what they were trying to say, but they just left it off. I don't know what happened. So tax deductible debt. That's the first time in any of their articles that I found a sentence just cut off. So tax deductible debt. If there is such a good thing as good debt, this is it. Tax deductible debt include mortgages, student loans, business loans, investment loans, and all other loans in which interest paid is returned to you in the form of tax deductions. Since this debt is generally low interest as well, you can easily build a portfolio while paying it down. The types of debt we focus here on, on here are long-term low interest and tax deductible debt, such as mortgage payments. If you do have high interest debt, you'll likely want to focus on paying it off before you begin your investing adventure. But I say, no, guys. I disagree with this statement because of one reason. Our investing adventure began 30, what, what's today, guys? What is today? We're on 32, 33? Day 33, guys. Okay? We are on day 33 of our adventure. And we did not have to pay down our high interest debt yet. You can learn guys, you can learn while you have debt. And guess what will happen when you're ready to get out of debt, when you have when you are able to make the moves to get out of debt, you'll already have your basis of knowledge up there to start using the extra money you have to invest. It's okay to just learn for free. You guys know that how, how long did you guys go to elementary school to learn how to read for free it's okay people make things like if you're doing something and you're not getting anything out of it immediately people make that uh, taboo or something you shouldn't do but guys you should always be learning always don't let anybody tell you anything bad about learning even if it's something you should have already known don't you ever let anybody talk down on you about learning because at the end of the day, the people who have learned the most, they're going to do the best at everything, guys. That's just the sad truth. If you go to a school, the people who learn the most, they're going to do the best at school. If you go to a business, the people who learn the most and the fastest, they're going to do best at the business. It is what it is. So you have to put it in your mind that you're going to sit down, whether you have money, whether you don't have money, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you want to be, whether you like the stock market, whether you hate the stock market, put it in your head that you are going to sit there and learn the stock market. You are going to learn every single way to manipulate and benefit off of the stock market. 
And if you put that as your goal right now, guys, I'm serious. You make that as your main goal. Even while you're learning, you'll already be on your investing adventure. If you are sitting here with a, nothing in your pocket, I'm talking you don't even have lint in your pocket, guys. If you are sitting here broke as a joke, you are already on your investing adventure. You are already investing in yourself, guys. And don't ever discredit that, okay? So important, not all interest-bearing loans are tax deductible. Be sure to check with your lender or a financial professional whether you can deduct the interest on your loan. So, you know, house loans, that's always good to, to know if you can deduct that interest. So compounding to grow money, debt, elim debt elimination, particularly if something like a loan that will take long-term capital robs you of time and money. And guys, time is money. Your time is equal to money. If you go to a job, you trade your time for money. So what right now what you're doing is trading your time for money. Time is money. Don't waste time because you're wasting money. Don't waste money because you're wasting time. In the long term, the time in terms of the compounding time of your investment that you lose is worth more than the money you actually pay in terms of the money and interest you're paying to the lender. You want to give your money as much time as possible to compound. This is one of the reasons to start a portfolio in spite of carrying debt, but not the only one. Your investments may be small, but they will pay off more than the investments you would make later in life because these small investments will have more time to mature. That's another reason you start learning right now. If you have a child, I suggest you watch these videos with your children. The more your children learn in life about money, the more those small investments will have time to mature in their brains, guys. You learn this right now and your brain will learn it one way. Your brain will learn it the way that we learn it. And you will make money off of that one way of learning. If you teach your child right now about investments, about financial security, about investing in stock market, they will have more time in their brains to mature those thoughts. They will do things with money that you will never think of. They will do things with money that most of us will never think of because we weren't allowed to mature over time with those thoughts in our mind. We were not taught about the stock market. I don't know why, because they don't want us all to be rich, guys. Think about it. If they teach you about the stock market in school, you will grow up with all the money ideas. So you will make money. It will be important to you. But if you grow up with the stock market not being important to you and not learning about all of these things in school when you're young, you, they will not mature with you. And we will have a freaking whole society full of people who don't know anything about the stock market, do not invest, so they never have their money making money for them. They are always making money for themselves, which means they use their time and their bodies, which means they break down their bodies and they waste all their time. But if we didn't have people that did that, who would run the McDonald's? If you work at McDonald's and you're investing in the market at the same time, how long do you really think that you will work at McDonald's? Come on, guys, think about it. If you listen to this and you learn the stock market while you work at McDonald's and you save one of your paychecks every time, because let's say you still live with mom, you're 16, 17, you still live with mom, save one of those paychecks. And every time you put that paycheck into, uh, let's just take one of their examples. Let's say every time you put their, that paycheck into one of these, one of these that they talked about, any of them. This one, exchange traded. You go to VTI and you put one of your paychecks in every time for McDonald's. You know what's going to happen? That money is going to compound and grow. And by the time you are done working at McDonald's, you're going to have an actual portfolio. That's how quick it is, guys. But nobody wants McDonald's boy or girl living with their mother to save like that. They want them to buy Louis Vuitton purses and Air Force Ones and whatever else they tell you is popular in the moment. That's not the way to do it, guys. If we learned in school and had more time to mature with the ideas in our mind, by the time we were ready to work at 16, those, the ideas of the stock market would become ingrained into our lives. By the time we were 16, a normal job would be a jumping off point. We have people that 
that work a normal job their whole lives and never get anywhere because they never learn about maturing or compounding their money. So compound your money to grow, guys. Stop thinking that you have to earn every dollar. Sometimes your dollars can earn dollars for you. And sometimes your brain can work without making money, guys. Learning is working without making money, and it's okay. You have to be okay with that. Just like in the stock market, you have to be emotionless. You have to be okay with learning for free, guys. Creating a plan to invest. Instead of making a traditional portfolio with high and low risk investments that are adjusted according to your tolerance and age, the idea is to make your loan payments in the place of low risk and or fixed income investments. This means that you will be seeing returns from decreasing your debt load and interest rather than the 2 to 8% return on a bond or similar investment. The rest of your portfolio should focus on high risk, high return investment like stocks. If your risk tolerance is very low, and that means, guys, that you will freak out if you lose money, the bulk of your investing money will still be going toward loan payments, but there will be a percentage that does make it to the market to produce returns for you. Even if you have high risk tolerance, you may not be able to put as much as you'd like into your investment portfolio because unlike bonds, loans require a certain amount in monthly payments. Your debt load may force you to create a conservative portfolio with most of your money being invested in your loans and only a little into your high risk and return investments. As the debt gets smaller, you can ad adjust your distributions accordingly. So like I said, if you're at home and let's say you do have debt, you have to pay some bills at home. But you can take that extra check and not buy shoes for the for the month or not buy fast food. Guys, fast food. Take fast food out of your life. If you take fast food out of your life and start cooking your food, you will save at least 50%. I promise you, 50%. I, I'm, I guarantee it. Stop making things in a package. Get yourself some chicken breast. Yes, chicken breast, guys. It's low fat, so it saves your heart chicken breast and saute it do not fry it bake it saute it in a pan do not use butter use something like sunflower seed oil grape seed oil and eat vegetables you guys know how much you'll save that's twenty dollars for the chicken that'll last you for a couple meals that's pennies for let's say what kind of vegetable do you guys want to use bok choy you don't like bok choy i love bok choy how about spinach how about Oh, you know what's really good? Um, sweet potatoes. Yum with some curry. Guys, you can make yourself a plate of curry, chicken, and potatoes that will feed one person four or five times for under $20. You have to start cooking at home. You have to. If you want to start making yourself more money, one of the first things you cook, cut out is extra food. Extra drinks, guys. Cut out the food and drinks. If you cut those out, I promise you, your budget will get bigger. Yep, it will. So the bottom line, you can invest in spite of debt. Guys, you can invest in yourself. Stop thinking that investing only means money. Invest in your knowledge. Gain this knowledge. Come in here once a day, Monday through Friday. You sit through these videos and we get on Thinkorswim and we really learn this. And now you've invested in yourself in spite of debt. The important question is whether or not you should. The answer to this question is personalized to your financial situation and risk tolerance. There are certainly benefits from getting your money in the market as soon as possible. There are also benefits, guys, and they're not mentioning it here, from getting your brain. You get your brain in there as soon as possible, okay? You might not be able to put your money yet, but you could sure put your brain. So... There are also no guarantee that your portfolio will perform as expected. These things depend on your investing strategy and market timing. And these right here, guys, are both things that you can learn in spite of debt. Investing strategy and market timing. And guess what both of those are also, guys? Marketable skills. Those are skills that can make you money. So you might not have money right now. What do you do? You use your brain. It's free. And you learn investing strategy, market timing. And you utilize those skills until you are good at them. And guys, you can practice right on TD Ameritrade Think or Swim. It's free. 
So it's all free. Everything I'm telling you right now is free. And then when, you know what you can do? You can sell these. You can sell your investing strategy skills. You can sell your market timing skills. People are looking for other people to help them with their investing strategy and market timing. You could go on Fiverr and help people make investing strategy plans. Yeah, seriously. Once you learn this, me and you, we sit here and we learn this. You can get on Fiverr and make it your new job. It's that simple, guys. You have to start thinking, how can you make money, make money for you? So you need to take money, anybody's money, and make it make money for you. And one way to do that is by educating yourself. So the biggest benefit of investing while in debt is psychological. Look, they said it, guys. Paying down long-term debts can be tedious and disheartening if you're not the type of person who puts your shoulder into a task and keeps pushing until it's done. For many people who are servicing debt, it seems like they're struggling to get to the point where their regular financial life, that of saving and investing, can begin. Guys, some people never, ever reach this part of their life, saving and investing. They, I, my father, my pops, and I know people say, people all the time, no, my pops went through his whole life, his whole life, and never, ever saved or invested. And he died poor, guys. And that's the reality of it. And then it becomes cyclic because he didn't teach his children anything about money. So now his children, none of his children are rich. I don't have any rich siblings. You know, it's cyclic, guys. But you know how you get out of that, that cyclic cycle of poverty? You teach yourself. It's psychological. You get your mind right. And once you get your mind right, you can get your debt right, guys. It all starts right here. And that is the simplest thing to fix. Everybody says, well, I can't fix it. If it was something I could fix. No, you can fix it. You can fix it. Even if you don't know anything about math, even if you feel like you're not smart, you can learn the stock market. You can learn about money. Financial literacy, this is what they don't want you to know, is something all of us can learn. Yes, that's right. Financial literacy, guys, I said it, is something that every single person can learn. I'll stand on that hill, prove me wrong. Because you don't have to learn everything about it, guys. There are parts of the economy, parts of the stock market, parts of things that you can learn. And then, like I said, you can take advantage of it. You can manipulate learning about investing strategy and market timing. And you can actually make money off of them. So I say begin now with your brain, guys, even if you don't have $1 to invest. So debt becomes like a limbo state where things seem to be happening in slow motion. By having even a modest portfolio to track, you can keep your, youth, your enthusiasm about the growth of your personal finances from ebbing. For some people, building a portfolio while in debt provides a much-needed ray of light. And that, guys, is very, that is very true. Right now, putting aside a little bit of money into an account for my, for my market, it's, it feels great, guys. Even if it's only $5, it's okay. You know how much if it, it feels great, like don't buy the coffee and instead put that into an envelope called my future and just keep it, keep, keep saving it. So this is for their Vanguard tried and true thing. But so that is the end of our article, guys. And that was very helpful. It gave us a lot of good ideas, but mostly it reminded us that you are already on your journey. If you are watching this or any of the other videos in the finance stock market learning um, playlist, you are already learning, okay? So congratulations, and I am proud of you. Go back, rewatch any of those videos. Guys, some of those videos, I go back and rewatch them. You know why? Because in order to learn something, you have to hear it a bunch of times. And you will hear me say things a bunch of times. It will help you. Just listening. You don't have to read it yourself. You don't have to write it down. You don't have to do anything but really listen. And try to really make it work in your mind. When you're learning, guys, you find a way to make what people are saying or showing you work in your mind. That's how you learn. I don't know how it's going to work in your mind. You might not know how it works in your mind. But you have to learn to make it work in your mind. So as you listen to people speak or you read, read articles like this one, 
you need to learn how you're learning. If, if you hear something, and maybe you hear it in um, a song, and you can remember it. Make a song, guys. When I was in college and I had to learn every bone in the human body, I learned most bones with a song. There's over 15 or 11 bones in your wrist right here. And they're little tiny, they're little tiny bones, guys. And they all click together. They're just like sitting in there together. Little tiny bones that go across right here. Two layers of them, a layer up top and a layer on bottom. And I had to learn every name of those bones and every edge where they hook to the other bones. So some bones have like a protrusion. It's like a knotty protrusion. And would you believe that the protrusions are named too? The protrusion of your, bro of your bone has a name. And when you go into college to learn to learn anatomy and physiology, you have to learn every name of everything on the human body. So most of those things I learned with a song, guys. Songs are very helpful. So maybe songs aren't for you. Maybe you have to write everything down. So you know what you do when I speak? You take notes. You take notes about 401ks and dividends and reinvestment plans. You take notes about all of it, and then you reread your notes or you rewrite your notes, and maybe that's what works for you. So let us bop onto this news real quick. We will not linger very long here because you know how I get worked up about the news, but we're going to check out, just see what the biggest headlines are, and uh, go from there. Stocks rise as debt ceilings talk. Earnings stay in focus. So they were talking about the stocks were dropping because of the debt to ceiling talks. Express optimism over the debt ceiling. They always do this every single year now, guys. They make this debt ceiling like a big thing. You know why? Because they don't care about us enough to fix it. So old Joe Biden says he's confident the U.S. will avoid an unprecedented and catastrophic debt default. Well, I don't know if I believe you, Joe. I don't know if I believe you about that one. Republicans try to stop everything that a Democrat does. And vice versa, Democrats try to stop everything Republicans do. Cold tea. Yuck. Okay, so Target beats, but warns consumers are getting cautious. What do they beat? So, Target... You guys know that things are going bad when Target didn't hit a bullseye. Target's like every woman's favorite store, and they didn't hit a bullseye. Why didn't they? We came into 2023 clear-eyed about what consumers are facing with persistent inflation and rising interest rates. We were determined to build on our guests' trust by unifying them as one team to deliver affordable joy each and every day as consumers and businesses navigate a third straight year of dynamic challenges. I'm going to tell you why they didn't hit the bullseye. I go to Target. I buy my soap at Target and I buy my dog pads at Target. Why? Because I love the dog, the dog pads at Target, guys. The puppy pads are the best quality puppy pads for the cheapest price. Okay? Target. Yep, up and up. So... I go to Target to buy my pet supplies. And I go there at least twice a month, guys. And every single time I go to Target, there are no cashiers. Nope, no cashiers, guys. Target has maybe one cashier in their whole store. And these are both Targets I go to. There's two different Targets near where I live. And both of them, no cashiers, guys. One day, I stood in line for 30 minutes waiting to use the four self-checkouts that they have. Four self-checkouts and one employee running the entire front of the store. Oh, and then the Starbucks. The Starbucks person was also there, but the Starbucks person can only ring up one person at a time because, you know, it's Starbucks, and they can't ring up much stuff because they have, like, a barrier still at the Starbucks for the pandemic barrier. So they can't ring up a lot of stuff. But they had one person ringing, and then they shut that person down and had only the four self-checkouts. So 30 minutes in line, of course it's not a, a direct strike on the bullseye. When a woman goes in there just to look around, or a man, 
when they go into Target to look around, guys, how many people go to look around to see what Target has new? When you go in and you see a line that goes all the way back to like the produce, I'm talking like this, it looked like a line from the Black Friday sale. It was huge. It was ridiculous. And we all had to check ourselves out. And who wants to go to a Target and do all of your own checkout? I don't. I'm, I'm talking like people had like 50 items and they had to go through self-checkout. And of course, you're not going to hit the bullseye because how many of those people actually rang up those items correctly? If I was behind 50 people and some of those people had 50 items, how many people didn't ring up all their items? And I'm not saying that that's a big loss. Like maybe they didn't ring up one item or something didn't ring up correctly, but you're, you're losing money and we're paying the price. So I'll tell you why you didn't hit the mark because stores want to make a bigger profit. And when they try to make a bigger profit, it's less and less for us. It's worse for us every time they make a bigger profit. So that is why, you know, Home Depot did the same thing. Home Depot didn't hit their mark. Amazon unveils new Alexa enabled product. New four new echoes. Man, how many of these things do they need? They try to make them look cooler. What is this? I need earbuds, guys. Let me know in the comments if you guys have good earbuds. I've been using these little crappy ones because I can't find any earbuds that fix in my, fit in my ears. That's why I don't use headphones. Even when I play, I don't use headphones. I have these little tiny ones that are like school candies, or they are school candy. They have a little school on them. But they're so big for my ears. When I put them in, they either fall out while I'm playing, or they hurt because I have to stick them in so deep. I need earbuds, but I want them to be little baby earbuds. Like, I want them to fit into children's ears. I wonder if they have... Amazon's been in the midst of slashing jobs across its corporate workforce in recent months. You know why? Corporate guys, you notice that they don't slash all the jobs in the warehouses. They're slashing the corporate, where the corporate jobs because AI is taking over, guys. AI is taking over everything. And by everything, I just mean the jobs that you didn't have to go physically work at. I wish AI would have took over those physical jobs. But a loss. They did not. So what else do they have for us? In his first public appearance since SVB's collapse, former CEO Greg Becker is asked to defend trip to Hawaii and whether, oh no, and whether he'll forfeit $1.5 million bonus. This dude's company failed. Guys, look at right here. This is top worker of the month, right? Top worker of the year. This dude made a, a freaking bank fail. He, he is a CEO and his bank collapsed. And he still got a $1.5 million bonus. That's not how bonuses work, people. Why are we letting our banks and our big CEOs do this to us? This man, this man should have to pay $1.5 million dollars. He shouldn't have got the bonus. He should have to give the bonus back and he should have to pay $1.5 million. How are you the CEO of something? It fails and you still get $1.5 million. And then other businesses, which is going to come from us, guys, they're going to take the fees from us. Other businesses are paying billions of dollars to, to make up for this loss. And he got $1.5 million bonus. There were plenty of people. And, and I bet you that nobody said anything, guys. I bet you he doesn't have to give it up. He lives in a $600,000 home. Oh, no, no, no. That's not that. That's a, just an ad. I was going to say, that's kind of a cheap home. On March 9th, $42 billion in deposits were withdrawn in a single day from SVB after it became clear that the bank had suffered huge unrealized losses in its loan portfolio due to rising interest rates. Becker argued that the bank run was the central root cause of the bank's failure. I do not believe that any bank could survive a bank run of that velocity and magnitude. During the two-hour hearing, Becker explained that he partially blamed the media for its coverage of SVB and said that a herd mentality set off a bank fund, bank run, guys. Come on. Come on, Yahoo 
a bank run that ultimately led to the bank's demise. Silvergate's failure and the link to SVP caused rumors and misconceptions that, to spread quickly online. Okay, let me tell you something, Mr. Becker. If you have a business and a, an article can ruin it, if you have a business that an article can ruin in several days and lead to, the, lead to that, to that um, business's demise, your business isn't crap. I said it. Your business isn't crap. If one article or if some people talking about your business can fail your business, it's not crap. How many times in the news have we seen businesses be talked bad about? How many? Come on, Mr. Becker. Because Johnson & Johnson is still one of the hugest companies. And how many times has Johnson & Johnson been, ex been accused of cancer causing agents in their items, guys? How many times? That's all that they've ever been accused of, causing cancer, causing cancer in their powder, causing cancer in everything, guys. And if they, if they are still alive, Johnson & Johnson, after all that bad, that bad rep from the news, why can he use that as an excuse? It's not an excuse. It's hard to believe a 30-year bank executive and CEO for 12 years should have needed a roadmap from the regulators to define the obvious problems that needed to be fixed and worked, said Senator Sherrod Brown. Man, he said, I strongly believe that the leadership team and I made the best decisions we could with the facts, forecasts, and outside expert advice available so to us at the time. I believe we were responsive to the regulators' feedback. Bro. While Becker said he took responsibility for the bank's failures, senators were clearly frustrated that he could not point to a fatal wrong decision on his own part. Senators brought up a trip to Hawaii Becker took after the bank run, and Senator John Fetterman asked Becker whether he thinks the same policies that apply to working-class Americans should apply to him. Shouldn't you have a working requirement after we bail out your bank? Republicans seem to be more preoccupied with SNAP requirements for hungry people than protecting taxpayers that have to bail out these banks. And of course he didn't reply. Shouldn't you, have, shouldn't you have a working requirement after we bail out your bank? No, he went to Hawaii after we bailed out his bank and he took out a $1.5 million bonus. Because that's what rich people do, guys. And in order for you to get out of this cycle of being abused by rich people, you have to actually become one of these shysty little people. Look at him. This guy looks like he will rip you off. He does. And he did, guys. He ripped off us. As, as taxpayers, he ripped us off. He took $1.5 million. He went to Hawaii. He closed down a bank. And we all have to pay for that bank failure. When is he going to be held responsible? When are, when are the people that were in charge of this bank going to be held responsible? Never, guys. They're never held responsible. They weren't held responsible the last time. When we bailed out J.P. Morgan and, all, and, Sh and um, Wells Fargo and all those other banks, they weren't held responsible. Those guys all took the same. They all took vacations. Do you know what happens when you lose a job? You don't get to go on vacation. But if your name is Rich Man McGee and Greg Becker or Jamie Dimon and you work for a bank, you literally get to do whatever you want. That's it. You get to do whatever you want. You get to make these choices. You get to affect people's money. You get to affect people's livelihood and their lives. And nothing happens. There's no repercussions for these people. At all. And that is why you have to get involved, people. That is why. That is why it's important to learn. Because it's all good and dandy to say, well, I don't like the market and I don't like these people who are in the market. But if you're not in the market, guys, you can't get these people that you don't like out of the market. He shouldn't be a CEO. Greg Becker should never, ever be allowed to be a CEO again of any money institution. He, he's not fit, guys. They had a bank run where they took $52 billion out of his bank and he went to Hawaii. Bro, he went to Hawaii after all that money. $42 billion, and he said, I don't care. It's not my money. I got my 1.5. It's in my bank account. And, and I bet you that his 1.5 wasn't banked at SVB. Where do you guys think he had his $1.5 million bonus? 
Where does Greg Becker bank? I wonder if you can even find out things like that. I bet it wasn't at his bank, guys. He said refuses to commit to giving up his $10 million annual pay. Why would he? Why would he give up $10 million pay and a $1.5 million freaking bonus? Where does Greg Becker keep his money? Why can't we know where he banks? Okay, he's holidaying. Guys, wh where does he bank? Someone needs to find out where Greg Becker banks. Because I bet he didn't bank with his own bank, did he? Oh, he... <laughs> this guy. This guy. Silicon Valley Bank CEO Greg Becker cashed out $2 million just before the collapse. What a dirty, rotten scoundrel. Do you think he, he called his homeboys and told them? Cashed out stock and options for $2.27 million net gain in the weeks before Friday's collapse. Becker exercised stock options, meaning he paid money to convert his options into stock and then immediately sold the stock. That netted him $2.27 million in personal profits. The sales were part of a prearranged executive stock sale plan known as a program that Becker filed as recently as just six weeks before the bank collapse. Of course he did that, guys. Why would he not prearrange executive stock sale right before a collapse? You guys think that in January, if six weeks... You guys think he didn't know six weeks before the collapse? He knew. He also sold stock on January 31st for another $1.1 million, though the filing reports that this was to cover a tax liability. The stock, which Becker sold at prices ranging from 285 to 302 was worthless Friday night after the bank's sudden two-day collapse. Whoa. Let's look at their ticker, guys. What is it? As we can't. Man. You can't look at their ticker anymore, huh? It's gone. Can you look at their stuff? Financial group. Is this it or is this the... This is the new one that they traded to. Mm. Try to look at five years, see what they got going on. So, let's see. This does show it. He did it January. Where's the dates? Where's the date? Take her out of here. Just leave her alone. Go. Come here, Butters. Come here. Huh? Butters is telling me that it's time to end money, time, money talk, guys. She says, well, look at this tomorrow. She's ready to go run around. Look at her. Lumpy. Butters, say hi. Look, say hello, neighbors. You want to play? I get my hair. Oh, she's in my hair. Okay. Don't run. Whew. Okay, guys. So I think we're just going to call it a day. But he sold at the top, guys, up here because he's a scoundrel. And then it dropped down and he got all of his money and sold for the highest amount that he could. Makes sense. So we are going to call it a day, guys. And I will be back here tomorrow, same time, same place. Be there or be square. Have a great day, neighbors, and I hope you enjoyed.